Hello friends, I am Dr. Shubhdi Bhattacharya. I am working as a infertility consultant and as a consultant gynecologist and obstetrician at uh, Indira Ayurveda Hospital, New Delhi. Today, the main topic of our discussion is when to choose IVF. This discussion is mainly targeted towards infertile couples who are still in a dilemma whether they should seek the help of a doctor and whether IVF is for them or not. But firstly, I would like to begin my talk by saying a few words about the present scenario of the COVID-19 pandemic. Friends, as you all know, the entire earth has been gripped by this tremendous tragedy of a pandemic called the COVID-19 pandemic because of which our entire life of around the globe had come to a standstill and we are still bearing the brunt of these and I hope each and every one of you are still paying attention to the rules that have been suggested by our government authorities and also by the statutory health organizations like the World Health Organization and the ICMR. I hope each and every one of us is following the rules of physical distancing, the practice of hand hygiene and all the rules and regulations that are prescribed by the local authorities. Keeping this in mind, let's begin our talk. So, whenever we think of IVF, many couples are in a dilemma whether they need IVF or not or whether they should start treatment or not. Therefore, to decide whether IVF is for you or not, we should know the indications or the categories of indications where the IVF is indicated. So prior to going to this discussion, I would like to just tell you that you can contact me or send uh, your reports to Indira IVF, I will go through the reports and advise you accordingly whether the infertility treatment is needed or not and whether you require IVF or uh, whatever medical advice is needed. For that, you need to contact me on 7239-4433. I am repeating the number. Uh, you need to contact me on 7239-4433. So this is the number that you will contact me on. You can send your reports or send all the necessary details on it and I'll just get back to you. You can also send your questions uh, in this uh, Facebook uh, play as it uh, is being played in the comment section or contact us at our website also. So the most common reason for which uh, the IVFs are being done worldwide are the tubal factors. As you know, uh, the female genital tract has two fallopian tubes and these tubes are the sites of um, um, uh, fertilization where the egg and sperm meet and the embryo formation takes place. So because of if any reason, this uh, procedure gets hampered. It may be because of tubal blockage, it may be because of irreversible damage or any other infection etc. and the tubes are damaged irreversibly in such a case that if they cannot be repaired at all then the only option that remains is to undergo IVF and a leading number of couples that are undergoing IVF are because of tubal factors. This is closely followed by the next category of patients who are suffering from, that is the female is suffering from, endometriosis. This is a quite common term. Quite often women are told that they are having one or more stigmata of endometriosis. What are these? Uh, usually they are being told that you have a chocolate cyst or an endometrium in the ovary and they also have distorted pelvic architecture which results in the blockage of tubes. As the tubal anatomy gets distorted, there is hindrance in all aspects, there is difficulty in egg rupture, egg formation, there is difficulty in fertilization and there is difficulty in transport of the embryo also. So all these levels get hampered and so the pregnancy doesn't take place. This is next 
followed by the third category which is a very important category that is uh, diminished ovarian reserve we see gradually worldwide the age of child bearing has been increasing this is because women more and more are concerned towards uh, the careers and they are giving starting of a family a secondary role as a result of which uh, gradually the age of child bearing is increasing it has been found that there is a sharp decline in the ovarian reserve of women particularly after the age of 35 years and as more and more career oriented people are coming i see patients coming in their late 30s and early 40s for their first child in such cases it's a quite common scenario that the ovarian reserve is diminished or has been extinguished completely so that's a problem scenario where we need to intervene and we need to act we have various strategies we have ivf for those who have poor ovarian reserve there are various strategies how to maximize your oocyte yield how to improve the quality of your eggs and in worst case scenarios we have also uh, donor egg ivf programs wherein we can take help of donor eggs from other uh, females also so we have come through three uh, indications for which couples need to undergo ivf i would again like to remind you that you can contact me for any kind of medical assistant or infertility related advice on this number 72394433 i would repeat the number 72394433 you can send your your reports uh, via whatsapp or you can send in in the comment section below or you can also send to the indra ivf female id so continuing with the indications for which a couple has to undergo ivf the next important cause is because of male infertility now this is quite an important area and which is often neglected the contribution of a male towards fertility is often just um, uh, graded based on the basis of just a semen examination but it is much more we have often seen that in indian scenario the entire burden of infertility is just put on the female whereas it has been found that the male is also equally responsible for the causes of infertility we see gradually that uh, the number of males who are uh, suffering from infertility which may be in various forms like there may be a diminished count of spermatozoa there may be a diminished uh, motility of spermatozoa or there may be defective sperms or quite a few number of males also turn up who do not have any sperms that is known as azoospermia so this variety or spectrum of male infertility related causes are there which are a very important contributor towards infertility in, in in this cases also um, after you have done the initial treatment and there is no other option then you need to go for an ivf the next cause is of course when you have recurrent pregnancy losses or uh, the patient is known to suffer or have any defective gene or is a carrier of gene which may be either of the patients now why these two causes are related because in both these causes the genetic factors play a very important role suppose a couple is there uh, who is able to conceive naturally but has a history of many uh, recurrent pregnancy losses in such a cases the most important factor that comes to play is the genetic factor so how to prevent it we have certain genetic analysis protocols such as pre implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy or for single genes now this help us in determining whether the embryo is harboring a defective genetic component or not the defective genetic component can be in terms of the number of chromosomes where which is known as aneuploidy which may later manifest as various syndromes like the down syndrome edward syndrome or patau syndrome which we can detect prior to transferring so that this situations do not arise later on the other spectrum of this is when the uh, either of the parents are known to have any defective gene uh, various examples like thalassemia 
methyl malonic acid urea etc are there and if either of them are known to harbor such defective genes it is possible to perform a pgd the erstwhile pgd or the pgt m or sr as it is known now and we can assess whether the embryo is harboring this defective gene or not and accordingly the embryos can be selected so that we select only the healthy embryos and we are transferring this into the women so that our outcomes are maximized i would again like to remind you that if you wish to contact me for any infertility or ivf related queries please feel free to do so i'll just tell you the number again the number is 72393344 the number is 72393344 and uh, please feel free to contact for any of your infertility related queries now we have known this indications for which a couple needs to undergo ivf now when to start seeking uh, help for infertility or go for an ivf now this tremendously depends on the age of the female partner as well as the problem from which you are suffering if uh, the female's age is less than 35 years and the duration of cohabitation is around 1 year then uh, it is high time that the couple starts investigating and seeks fertility treatment in case the female partner is more than 35 years this duration further comes down to 6 months and even if there is a 6 months history of cohabitation and no pregnancy the couple should seek investigations and treatment if in any couple there is a clustering of two or more risk factors which uh, may be tubal factor ovarian factor or male factor if two or more factors are there then it is usually advisable that the couple should not be wasting much of time and should straight away be directed towards ivf why am i saying so because uh, the female factor as i said the ovarian reserve declines tremendously with age so as the age progresses the chances of retrieval of a good cohort of eggs and they producing a good cohort of embryos which will later give rise to live birth diminishes so we don't want to get into that situation and we want to intervene timely so that our results are optimized so we have known what are the indications for ivf Uh, and uh, when to seek uh, help for infertility treatment or ivf now how should you decide that whether this center or hospital is right for me or not usually it is seen in india that people seek treatment to the nearest ivf center without even considering what are the facilities available and whether the success rate is good enough or not always when you are going for choosing your ivf center keep this in mind that it should not be based on the distance from your home but it should should be based on the success rates or the probability that that hospital or clinic gives you for carrying home a live baby so always look into the facilities available whether the team of doctors and embryologists are good enough what is their success rate what are the facilities available and all these factors in a comprehensive manner should decide which center to choose from so now you know what are the indications what are uh, when sh you should seek treatment and how you should decide the site of your treatment i hope this small lecture or uh, session would enlighten you and would help you in choosing your correct path of treatment and in case any help you require personally for your own case please feel free to do so i have already told the number send me your reports on this and uh, i shall go through each of your reports and advise you personally what needs to be done correctly so with that we come to the end of this small session i hope all of us follow the rules for our safety in this uh, trouble times we should keep moving on keep going on in our lives but we should not ever give up the safety that has been laid down by our authorities so friends please uh, uh, stay safe be safe and keep others safe too thank you